Greetings, Latter-day Saints. I'm Michael Hicks, and I'm coming to you from, well, you know Winter Quarters, you know that stopover place where the Saints, in making their trek west, secured themselves for a while, hunkered down. I'm coming to you from uh, Summer Quarters, let's call it. Maybe Summer Quarantine would be the, <laughs> the better term for it. And we have Pioneer Day coming up. Now, Pioneer Day is the anniversary of the entry of the Latter-day Saints into the Salt Lake Valley in 1847. Uh, we have parades and so on. Basically, you need to know about Pioneer Day that uh, banks are closed, but we still get mail. Now, to prepare for that, I thought it would be nice to share with you some pioneer songs or songs that have to do with the early history of our church. And so uh, that's what I'm gonna do today. Now, a couple of provisos. First of all, I let my hair grow out a little bit here because I wanted to give a sense of authenticity, really get into uh, the pioneer era. So didn't wanna get the hair cut too much. Also, didn't get the piano tuned, so it will sound a little bit more like a piano that just came across the ocean and uh, maybe across the plains in a, a, a wagon of some kind. And one other thing, too, is that along the way, besides the songs I'm going to sing for you, we're going to have a few toasts. These are toasts that were made at Pioneer Day celebrations in the 1850s, 1860s sometimes uh, Fourth of July celebrations, and you can join with me in those. I've got my glass here, and so we do a toast. Feel free to have a glass at hand, do the toast with me, and that's our inter interactivity for this video. I have a little bit right now. I wanna start with a couple of songs that were said to be favorites of Joseph Smith's. That is, he called for them often, according to his friend Benjamin Johnson. The first of these is called Wife, Children, and Friends. That's a sort of a standard trio of values in the 19th century. It was often referred to the three great uh, values for human beings, or for men in this case, wife, children, and friends. And, uh, so uh, I thought I'd mention to you, before I sing it, that in this pamphlet, One Year in Scandinavia by Erastus Snow, he actually prints on the back of it in the 1850s the text of this hymn. And he says, if the person who wrote this song had known the calling of the Latter-day Saints, he would no doubt have included them in his text. As it is, he says, um, we often appropriate it for our own use. Maybe a new one to you, probably is. I'm gonna do my best to sing it for you <laughs> from memory, like everything else in this show today. Uh, let's see. When the black-lettered list to the gods was presented, the list of what fate to each mortal intends, at the long string of ills, a kind goddess relented, and slipped in three blessings, wife, children, and friends. In vain, surly Pluto maintained he was cheated, for justice divine could not compass its ends. The scheme of man's penance he swore was defeated, for earth became heaven with wife, children, and friends. There's a whole bunch of verses to the song. I'm gonna sing you two more. This one about a soldier. The soldier whose deeds live immortal in story, whom duty to far distant latitude sends. With transport would barter whole ages of glory for one happy day with wife, children, and friends. Though valor still glows in his life's waning embers, the death-wounded tar who his colors defends drops a tear of regret as he dying remembers how blessed was his home with wife, children, and friends. Let the 
breath of renown ever freshen and nourish the laurel which over her dead favorite bends. O'er me wave the willow, and long may it flourish, bedewed with the tears of wife, children, and friends. Let us drink for my song growing graver and graver to subjects too solemn insensibly tends. Let us drink, pledge me high, love and virtue shall flavor the glass which I fill to wife, children, and friends. This next song is one that was another uh, favorite of Joseph Smith's. Like, uh, Many songs of its era, it has a moral at the end, which you'll hear, and I'll say something about maybe at the end. It's from an opera, they called it then. It was really more what we call probably a pageant or a musical nowadays, but um, the opera was by Alexander Lee. It was called Music and Prejudice. What a great title. And uh, the, the song is called The Soldier's Tear. And uh, let me just sing it for you. Um. Upon the hill he turned to take a last fond look of the valley and the village church and the cottage by the brook. He listened to the sounds so familiar to his ear, and the soldier leaned upon porch a girl was on her knees she held aloft a snowy scarf that fluttered in the breeze she breathed a prayer for him a prayer he could not hear but he paused to bless her as she knelt He turned and he left the spot. Oh, do not deem him weak, for dauntless was the soldier's heart, though tears were. ranks in danger's dark career. Be sure the hand most daring there has wiped away a The moral, <laughs> go watch the foremost ranks in danger's dark career. Be sure the hand most daring there has wiped away a tear. What a message. All right, well, let's get on to the pioneer trek west. And you know the song, Come Come Me Saints, but you may not know, you probably don't know the song for which that came, which was called All Is Well well-known hymn, and I'm going to sing the earliest known version of its tune for you. It's a song about the individual confronting death, not the community, but the individual, and saying that, uh, yes, death, I'm looking at in the face, but all is well. And I'll sing a couple verses of this one. Um, grab it a little dry. 
drink here. What's this that steals, that steals upon my frame? Is it death? Is it death? That soon will quench, will quench this vital flame? Is it death? Is it death? If this be death, I soon shall be from every pain and sorrow free. I shall the king of glory see. All is well, all is well. Weep not, my friends, my friends, weep not for me. All is well, all is well. My sins forgiven, forgiven, and I am free. All is well, all is well. There's not a cloud that doth arise to hide my Jesus from mine eyes. I soon shall mount the upper skies. All is well. Beautiful song. I uh, I should point out that many of the songs that the Latter Day Saints sang were humorous and spoofs of well-known songs. Uh, we just referred to "Come, Come, Me Saints." which adapts a previous hymn in a new way and uh, turns it from a, a, a statement of the individual confronting death to the community confronting hardship and even death. But uh, here's one that's uh, an adaptation of a song called The Rose That All Are Praising. The original, it was, it was a popular song, but let's see. The rose that all are praising, it's not the rose for me. Too many eyes are gazing upon that costly tree. But I've a rose in yonder glen that shuns the gaze of other men. For me it's blossoms raising, oh that's the rose for me. That's the rose for me. Oh, that's the rose for me. Popular song. Well, the Saints did a number of versions of it, but the best known is this one called The God That Others Worship. Check it out. The God that others worship, he's not the God for me. He has no parts or body. God of revelation, oh, that's the God for me, oh, that's the God for me, oh, that's the God for me. There's like eight, ten verses, I'll just sing one other one, the one that I remember. The heaven of sectarians, it's not the heaven for me. It has no, that seems so doubtful, its location, neither on land nor sea. But I have a heaven on the earth, the land and home that gave me birth. A heaven of light and knowledge, oh, that's the heaven for me. Oh, that's the heaven for me.
Now, let's go ahead and do a toast before our next song. Uh, so I'm going to reach in here and uh, pull out a couple of toasts here. And I don't know which ones these are. So uh, here's one. Get my glass at the ready. To Mormonism. Born in poverty, cradled in storms, and reared in hurricanes, won't faint in earthquakes. To the people of Utah, united we can, divided we can't. Well, here's one. This is one I do have to uh, look at the lyrics to. This is a really rare song. It's called the Saints National Anthem. And it was written by Eliza R. Snow. The text, that is, uh, the music written by Charles John Thomas, who was the director of the Tabernacle Choir and also the Salt Lake Theater Orchestra. And this was actually written for the opening night of the Salt Lake Theater, 1862. And there was Brigham Young in his uh, box seating, and there was his, uh, uh, a few of his wives there, one of whom was Eliza R. Snow, or technically speaking, Eliza Roxy Snow Smith Young. And she wrote this text, and I'm gonna sing it for you, you know, in the tradition of national anthems being sung solo, <laughs> unaccompanied as we have at sports games and so on. And yeah, here you go. Oh God bless Brigham Young, be thou with him and guide him, waste them away, O oh God, we pray. Who, rising to oppose him, contend with thee. O oh God, bless Brigham Young, preserve his health and vigor, we pray thee. Give him power to live until the resurrection gives back our dead. Long live the wise and just to guide the hosts of Israel till Ephraim, till Ephraim reigns o'er his domain. And Judah's royal scepter shall be restored. Long may thy prophet live to battle with tradition, to break in chains each yoke and chain, sorry, to break in twain. <laughs> Let me do this latter part again. Long may thy prophet live to battle with tradition, to break in twain each yoke and chain, and give the world its freedom and truth its throne. That's one that hasn't been sung maybe a few times by anyone except me since 1862, I suppose. All right, well, uh, let's go to another one of these um, sort of fun songs, these uh, spoof songs. This is an adaptation of one that you know well by, uh, um, by Stephen Foster. Um, Do-da, do-da, dee-dee-dee-dee-dee, oh, do-da day. So uh, that Camp Town Races was adapted into a song that Saints just called Duda, and it uh, deals in part with the, well, I guess mainly with the so-called Utah War, 1857, was it? Uh, where the federal troops were being sent to basically corral things because there was the feeling, probably an accurate one, that Utah was becoming its own uh, nation, in a sense. So. Come, brethren, listen to my song, do-da, do-da. I don't intend to keep you long, oh, do-da day. About Uncle Sam, I'm going to sing, do-da, 
da destruction he is trying to bring oh do da day then let us be on hand by Brigham Young to stand and if our enemies do appear we'll sweep them from the land now you should be able to join in at least on the do da parts and maybe you'll learn the chorus by the end <laughs> okay old squaw killer harney's on his way to da do da the Mormon people for to slay, oh, do da day. And if he comes, these words I'll tell, do da, do da. Our boys will drive him down to heck, oh, do da day. I just changed that. Then let him be on hand by Brigham Young to stand. And if our enemies do appear, we'll sweep them from the land. Now, I'll just sing the last verse here. Um, you know that the first presidency was Brigham Young and Heber C. Kimball and um, Daniel Wells. And there's a reference to them in this verse. So here's long life to Brigham Young. <laughs> do da, do da. And Heber too, for they are one. No, oh, do da day. Let them and Daniel live to see. Do da, do da. This people gain their liberty. No, oh, do da day. Then let us be on hand. Let's do another couple of toasts. All right. Got my glass in hand here. Let's see. Ah, to the enemies of Mormonism, may they always be obliged to wear very short shoes and have particularly long corns. To American glory and American freedom, may they ever keep pace with each other. Well, speaking of songs that are adapted from, borrowed from, or rewritten from uh, Stephen Foster songs, I mean, you have to understand that everybody knew Stephen Foster songs. They, he was like the Beatles of his era from the 1840s, I think, through the Civil War period and beyond. And the fact that you know Camp Town Races and you can sing Duda and so on, that's pretty amazing that these songs have lingered that long. Well, this particular one is uh, uh, a favorite of Brigham Young's in this sense. You know the song, Oh My Father, the, the text written again by Eliza R. Snow. And Brigham Young, we know from several sources, preferred this tune, that is the song Gentle Annie by Stephen Foster, to be the setting for the words to Oh My Father. Those words have been set to many tunes uh, through the years since uh, it was first written. But I think you'll hear it's quite, a, quite a, a perfect, in my opinion, setting for these uh, lyrics. Uh, I'll do my best to get through this song accurately and with the heart that I think that it deserves. Oh, my Father, Thou that dwellest
my spirit from on high, but until the key of knowledge was restored, I knew not why. In the heavens, our parents single know the thought makes reason stay. I think old Brigham was right on that one. That's the best setting of those words so far. Well, let's break for another couple of toasts. Let's do, uh, let's do our final three here, and then I got one more song to sing you, and we'll wrap it up. So here's one. To the poor, may they enjoy the blessings of the God of heaven for they receive few from the hands of the rich. To America, the Alpha and Omega of the world. And finally, to the ladies of Utah, May they emulate the matrons of Rome and raise a host of champions for equal rights. All right, one more song. I hope you're not getting tired of these, <laughs> but uh, I enjoy them so much and I think they have lots to offer. Well, this one is uh, one that really flourished after the railroad came to Utah, basically 1869, and uh, it's called All Are Talking of Utah. And it, it reflects the sudden awareness that Utah is really a thing in the national consciousness. And you know what? It's still that way, for better or worse. And so the song is called All Are Talking of Utah. And feel free, once you learn the chorus, to join in. At least you can sing the word, hurrah, hurrah, which is the main <laughs> word of the chorus. Let's see. Who'd ever think that Utah would stir the world so much? Who'd ever think the Mormons were widely known as such? I hardly dare to scribble or such a subject touch for all our talking of Utah. It's Utah and the Mormons in Congress, pulpit, and press. Tis Utah and the Mormons in every place, I guess. Well, we must be growing greater because we can't be growing less or all our talking
send an army to set us Mormons right. Regenerate all Utah and bring us Christian light. Release our wives and daughters and put our men to flight. For all are talking of Utah. I'm gonna try to sing this chorus right this time. Hurrah, hurrah, the Mormons have a name. Hurrah, hurrah, they're on the road to fame. Don't matter what they style us, it's all about the same. For all are talking of Utah. This another one has a whole bunch of verses. I'm just going to go to the last verse. I now will tell you something you never thought of yet. We bees are really filling the hives of Deseret. If hurt, we'll sting together and gather all we get. For all are talking of Utah. Hurrah, hurrah, the Mormons have a name. Thanks so much for spending this uh, half hour with me and I hope that you enjoy as I do the best of Utah and that you're doing everything you can to lift, raise, elevate the rest of Utah. I uh, miss all of you and uh, look forward to meeting with many of you again as well as meeting some of you maybe for the first time in the future. Till then, 